Welcome to the Felt Studio. I'm Wendy Bailey and today I'm going to show you how to make a beautiful felted flower with stamens. So it's a really, really lovely project. It takes about half an hour. So I'm really looking forward to showing you all the little tips and tricks to um, make a flower like this. So what you will need. So you'll need a bar of soap. I use olive oil soap because I find it's not too sudsy and it's a neutral soap. Um, pH wise. So if you just use uh, any sort of vegetable oil soap that you have, it's not best with bath soap because bath soap is very sudsy. So try if you can to get some olive oil soap or a nice vegetable oil soap from the market. This is just a, um, a face washer or a kitchen sponge for blotting your wet wool. Piece of tulle netting uh, big enough to cover your flower. It's quite scratchy and coarse. Don't use fine bridal tulle. Uh, use the more scratchy, substantial net. Uh, and what else? A little bucket of water. I use just um, uh, tepid water, so just at room temperature, that seems to work the best. And a little pair of scissors is very handy. So, and the other thing we need is our wool, most importantly. So the wool that I'm using is 18 micron wool. You only need a small quantity of wool top very very small quantity um, so I've got a few little colors to choose from and I've also got some silk tops for a little bit of shine so they're silk fiber and they've been hand dyed so what I'm going to do I'm going to put the two colors together and I find by putting two colors together I get a really delightful mix of, of colors so if you are watching this video you might like to zoom in so you can see clearly um, hopefully I've done it on high, high resolution that um, you'll be able to see what I'm doing. But just zoom in if you want it close up. So I'm going to pull just on the very last centimetre of the wool top. And I'm going to pull six times. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to stroke the edges of the wool. And I'm going to twist both ends. So I'm just twisting it backwards and forwards in my fingers just for a little bit and then I also pull out the centre a little bit and I pop that down. So I'm going to do that five, uh, five times. Oops. My hands are a little bit damp. And you can do it with more than two colours of wool as well. I find two just gives a nice mix. So when you put your flat, your petals down, make sure that it's about a teacup size around here where the petals are actually touching. If you don't do that, your flower will end up really, really spidery. And what we want is for the flower petals to be joined, to be joined on this edge. And as you can see, it shrinks by you know, almost half. So we've got that. And then the silk tops. Silk tops are just beautiful to use. These are mulberry silk tops. So they're, um, they're very shiny. There's a few different um, types of silk tops that you can get. There's tusser silk, which would be beautiful as well. But I really love the shine on a flower. I love the shine. And I'm using a little bit of a contrast colour on this one. And I'll also pull off a bit of the orangey colour as well to put on. It is quite fly away and make sure your hands are really dry when you're doing this or it will drive you batty. <laughs> Whoops. Don't worry too much about being a perfectionist with putting your fibre down. The wool has a kind of a little bit of a mind of its own. And it always seems to work out beautifully. Okay, whoop. There we go, that's the fly away I was telling you about. Netting over the top. And then I'm going to get my bar of soap and I'm going to put it into my water and squish it about. And what that does 
is just makes the water able to go into the wall. So just a little bit of froth and bubble on the top. You don't want it really sudsy. You can see that was only for a very small minute. And then I sprinkle that water on the top and pat down. Don't try and do it without netting. Okay, so once I've wet that down, I'm going to give it just one, two, three swipes of the bar. Don't rub the bar soap all over the top. Um, too much otherwise you'll just end up with like a shaving cream lather that goes all over the top of your felt and, and you imagine if those fibers are so slippery they're not going to stick together and what we want them to do is stick together when we're felting so I start rubbing and what I'm trying to do with this rubbing is form a skin on the surface of the felt so the first part of the uh, process is felting, where we're getting the fibres to stick together. And the second part is called fulling, and that's where the felt shrinks and hardens. So to remove the net, use your little blotting sponge or your face washer or your towel. Remove that. It just makes it easier to remove the net if you've done that. Okay, now just arrange these fibres. If there's any fibres that are not doing what you want them to do, just pop them back where you want them. I always bring these out to a nice little point, these edges of the flower. Okay, and then more rubbing. What we're wanting to, to do is to form this skin so that when we rub our finger across the surface of the wool, the fibres don't follow our fingers, so I'll show you when I remove the net next. I'm just going to have a bit of suds there, just wipe that. And I'm just going to remove the net. The, you don't want the fibres to come through the net, so it's really important to keep moving the net on and off. Now when I rub my fingers on this, you can see that those fibres are following my finger, so they're moving on the surface. These fibres are still soft and they're moving, so we keep going until that doesn't happen. Okay, I've got a little bit too much uh, suds going on there, so I'm just going to turn over my and wring out my cloth and just take some of that soap out. Was, was quite soapy. That's just because I'm using the, the same cloth. Okay, so when I move my finger on here now, those fibres are not moving. So that's the stage when we're going to be able to cut a hole in the felt to put the stains and stems through. So what I'm going to do is lift that up and I'm going to get my little scissors and just snip a little hole in that centre. Now we want our felt to still be quite soft because what we're going to do is join the stem and stamen to this piece of felt. So it can only be partly felted. We don't want it to be hard felted or the stamens and stems won't fit and won't stick. So that's got its, you can see it's got its little hole, pop that down. Next stage is to get a stem, so we get the green wool or whatever colour you like, pull off a piece of wool off the side of the wool tops. So you can see what I did, I separated that and I pulled it. So that's the stem, then what I'm going to do is just pull some tiny stamens. So same thing, I'm just pulling little pieces of wool and separating them down the wool top. I'm going to do six of these. So 
four, five, and six. This one to me looks a little bit thin, so I'm just going to add in that little bit of extra in with that. Now, if you wanted to have fun, you could add, um, you know, you could have two colours in these as well. You could put a little bit of silk fibre on the ends of the stamens. There's all sorts of things you can do with your stamens. So what we're going to do now, this is wet, um, and you just hold on to the end and you use your hand to rub the stamen. And what you're doing again is trying to get a skin on the outside of that. Okay. You notice that I haven't put extra water on these. I'm just using the moisture that's on the bubble wrap. You don't want these soapy and slippery. You just want them to be fairly dry. Okay, three. And the last one. So this uh, video is in real time. I'm not editing it. Hopefully I don't make any terrible mistakes. Um, so you can see that that wasn't very long that I was rubbing those. So I'm going to get my stem and I'm going to put the stamens at right angles across the stem and tie a knot around them to secure them all together. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is put this through the hole of the flower. So I'm going from the back of the flower and pushing the knot and the stamens through to the front of the flower. So you want all of these little stamens to pop through to the front and try not to stretch that hole too big. Um, now what we want is we want, we want the stamens and the knot on this part, so on the front of the flower. So this is going to be the inside of the flower. If you can have a look here, that's the reverse and that's the inside with the silk. So we're wanting the silk fibres here and the knot. Then we're going to flip the flower over and let those petals dangle over the top and then making sure that the knots on the inside of the flower, we're going to pull all of that together and if you're wanting to make a parcel tie, then you can keep those separate and felt them separately. This is just going to be um, one like this here. So we're going to felt them together. We start rubbing with the side of our hand, like a karate chop, over that joint. You can use your flowers for all sorts of things. You can use them for brooches, you can use them on a hat, you can use them on a bag, you can use them on parcel ties, on presents. Um, you can put them in a vase, you could. There's just so many different things you can do with the flowers. And just learning how to join these pieces together is really helpful for when you want to join other things together with your felt making. So you can see I'm turning the flower, so I'm turning it over and over and over like that and this section here that I'm rubbing is starting to firm up I can feel it in my hand so it's starting to firm up and I'm just going to give the stem a little bit of water and just get it starting to join together as well but make sure you hold on to this tightly because at this stage it's still quite delicate and you could pull it apart if worse comes to worse and you do pull it apart, you can just pop a little stitch in and keep felting. I kind of like to do it without stitching or without glue, so try and get it all. It's quite a challenge to get it all to join together. 
one of my favourite things. I used to um, teach at the craft and quilt fairs around Australia and um, a part of my job was to demonstrate felt making. So I spent a lot of time, a lot of time, days and days and days and days just making flowers over and over and over again in demonstrations. And it was, it was quite fun. Um, and it became a bit of a spectator sport and people had to just keep watching because they wanted to see what, um, what happened in the end. So that poor things had to stand there for half an hour <laughs> while I made the flower. Anyway, you can see I'm just keeping moving this around. I'm not doing anything to the rest of the flower. I'm going to just, just, you, you get a bit bored doing that. You can just rub the stem, the stem for a little bit. I try and mix up my movements so that my body um, recovers and it, I'm not using the same movements all the time. That was something that I learned years and years ago when I first started felt making. And, you know, I'm an older person now and my body still makes felt well but I think it's just um, important to mix up your movements so that you don't strain things. Okay so this is getting really nice and hard now and joined together which makes me happy. And sometimes when I'm demonstrating and particularly when I'm making a video there are occasions when things don't work out and um, it's um, always good to know things are stuck together. Okay, so that's nice and hard. Okay, so the next part is to start working on the flower part. Now it's very, very important at this stage not to open out your flower. So don't grab your flower and open it out to see what's happening in that middle because what will happen is you've made all these joins with the fibers are joining each other and it's still quite delicate. And if you stretch these out, you're going to pull apart all of those connections. So don't be tempted to open your flower out flat. You don't want a flat flower. You want it so that it has this really pretty uh, flower shape and a calyx around your stem and stamens. You don't want to see the knot. So just by doing that, by keeping your flower upside down and not opening it out flat, you'll keep your flower in a pretty shape. Okay. So now I'm going to start rubbing the petals. Now they're very delicate, so I do it very softly and gently, just a kind of very gentle rubbing motion. And every 10 or 12 rolls and rubs, I turn it. And then what you need to do with these petals is to stretch them a little sideways. Because the fibre is all laid out in one direction, uh, the petals will shrink a lot sideways. So we want to stretch them back out. Otherwise they would end up very, very spidery and we want them to have a little bit of substance. So you can see that's looking pretty already. This flower needs no more soap, but with yours, you might need to put a little bit of soap on it to do this as well. You can also tuck the stem in at this stage so that everything's getting felted together. You can see I'm using a different movement now. I'm just rubbing it between my hands. You could rub it on the bubble wrap as well. Okay, again, this is firming up. You can. I can feel it. Um, that's what we're wanting. We're wanting this felt to not be soft, but we're also wanting to um, make sure that it's um, stretched. And you can also start giving these little ends a bit of an extra twist as well. Again, making sure that we're not opening this out flat. At this point as well, you can hold it tightly and set, make sure that the um, stamens aren't sticking to each other. So keep them separate, otherwise you could end up with a big kind of sausage in the middle of your flower, which wouldn't look so good. And yes, it has happened. Not to me, but to students occasionally, because they get very chatty in class and they keep rolling and they, <laughs> they forget and then they open it out and it's a big sausage. Anyway, it's quite pretty. You can actually have that looking like a nice bud, but it's not ideal. It's not what we want. Okay, rubbing, rubbing, rubbing. 
So the friction and the moisture and movement is what is making this uh, wool fibre shrink. So we'll do the tail a little bit more. And this is getting really nice and hard now. So it's quite a solid thing. It's, it, it's solid. So as the, sh the felt is pulled, it shrinks and becomes firmer. Okay, make sure that's, that's quite pretty. So we're going to pull these, stretch them out. And you'll have your own flower shapes that you develop yourself. Um, you can do flowers in layers as well. I'm, I'm going to do a whole... A whole range of different um, different flower videos. Um, eventually, I will do a flower class. But at the moment, it's just these little videos. I just thought it's a nice way for people to um, learn to felt. Okay, more stretching. So these are really quite solid now. They're great. And the reason we want the felt to be solid is we want it to hold its shape. So you can see this, this flower here holds its shape really nicely. And if you don't make your felt hard enough, it won't hold its shape. So it's very, very important. And with these videos, it, it would be nice to make them shorter, but I think if you can see it done in real time, it gives you a much better idea. And we kind of all want to do everything so quickly nowadays. And I think it's good just to sit back, relax, watch. And it gives you an idea of how long it actually does take if we're not editing and fiddling about with the video. This is the big, this is a video from beginning to end, and we won't have... Um, have done anything to it so that you can see how long it actually takes. Okay, so this is looking great. Um, now I'm just going to pull these yellow stamens apart. As I said, they will stick together unless you're using a synthetic, in which case your, your um, stamens would be much floppier and they won't hold up. I quite like it how you can shape these. Um, Okay, so this is looking really good. So, one more little rub and we're done, I think. So to me, the way that I decide if it, it needs more is just just by feel, and that'll, that'll take you a little while to, to get used to. Um, if it's looking fluffy, which that is, you can add a little bit of soap. Soap really helps with the fluffiness, um, and it takes those fibres back down. Um, what's happening is that your hand is um, bringing up the fibre, the, the, sort of the little tiny scales on your hand that you can't see um, are bringing up the, um, the fibre on this wall. Now at this stage, um, in a perfect world, I would have a sink right next to me, but I don't. Um, so I'm actually just going to rinse out that extra soap in my little water bowl. Normally you would do that in very clean water and take all of the soap suds out. Some people with their um, wool felt will also give a little vinegar rinse and just a dash of vinegar in, um, in a litre of water and then just rinse. And that takes all of the soap out. I don't worry too much because I'm using a neutral soap, which is my olive oil soap. So the next is the final shaping. So if your flower looks like this, don't worry. It, it will look good in the end. Um, so blot some of that extra moisture out, make sure that it's nice and dry. And then stretch these petals sideways, keep them nice and fine. You can see how skinny that one is there, it's not so nicely shaped, so you, you give it a good stretch and a good stretch. Now when you've stretched, then you use your thumb and you push under and turn the surface of the flower under, so the edge end of the petal, you're turning under. So we're wanting it to have this lovely open shape. So by popping your thumb under and pushing, you do that, and then with these little, these little guys, 
again, we separate them all out and separate them. And then you can work each one of those individually just with your fingers and pop them wherever you would like. That one needs a bit more work. And some of these you might find are a little bit long. If that's the case, you can um, chop them with the scissors which I'll show you in a second. Okay, so that one to me is, is a little bit long. So I cut it on an angle. And this one as well, I'm just going to cut on a tiny angle. And you rub wherever you've cut. Make sure that you rub and heal the wool again because it's been cut. Okay, so we've got a very spidery. That one's a bit long as well. Chop it off. I think I got a bit carried away with my Damon length. Okay, so we'll give those a little. Oh, that one as well. And this is, I always call this part loving your flower. So don't just make a flower and it's a bit of a process. You really want to put a bit of love and care and attention into the finishing. And that's the difference between a good piece of felt and an average piece of felt. So that last bit of attention that you give your flower at the end will make all the difference. I, I see it so many times with students and they're just wanting to get things done and they're wanting to do them quickly. And I always just say, just slow down at the end. Uh, I spend, can spend an hour or more finishing a wrap if I'm doing a wrap, just rubbing it, making it all the fibres aligned. And really for that extra five minutes or 10 minutes at the end, it just makes such a difference. And then people, when they're looking at your work, they see the difference um, that you've actually taken some real care and attention. So that's our beautiful little flowers. So they'd just be lovely. So you can just wear them, all sorts of things. My grandchildren love them. They put them in their hair or they you know, put them in a bag. They give them to their little friends. Um, yeah, so that's our beautiful flowers with stamens. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. Um, and yeah, it's, um, it's lovely if you can, you can like my video. Um, that is really helpful to me. Um, and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more, um, more videos. There'll be lots of free videos coming up um, in the next few months. So thanks very much for watching. Bye.